All right, welcome back to the JavaScript training. Uh, we just learned in the previous sections how Checkout JS was built, uh, that it was built with post robot and X component, and how it actually operates at the lowest level, which is using post message. So now we are going to focus on the Checkout JS product itself. All right, so a quick introduction. So what is Checkout.js? Uh, I like to describe Checkout.js as a JavaScript library that simply renders the Hermes checkout experience on the merchant site without doing a full page redirect to PayPal like you would see in a classic integration. So what are the two different consumer experiences when our button is clicked? It's the same um, kind of thing that we saw with X component um, Checkout.js will render Hermes in either a pop-up or a light box. So when are each of the different experiences displayed? So you'll see a light box if the person is one-touch authenticated um, or any time the user is already authenticated and not on a secure screen. So what's a secure screen? Uh, there's some screens that we require being in a pop-up so the user can actually see the URL. Um, some of those screens are the login page, which is why the user always gets a pop-up if they're not already authenticated. There's also a couple more. Uh, one of them is the add credit card screen. So anytime the user is not on one of those screens, they are eligible for the Lightbox experience. So what products are supported in Checkout.js? I actually hear this um, question a lot, and it's, a, it's actually a pretty simple answer. Uh, Checkout.js supports any product that can render the Hermes experience using an EC token, a pay ID, or a billing agreement. So right off the bat, this would include PayPal Classic, um, Express Checkout, PayFlow, Express Checkout, the REST APIs, as well as Braintree. Okay, so now we're just going to go over um, a couple of the main features of Checkout.js as well as look at the GitHub repository. So first off, um, Checkout.js is open sourced on github.com. This means that any developer around the world can actually contribute code back to Checkout.js. Uh, it's also a great spot for um, submitting um, issues. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the GitHub repository. All right, so you'll see just your basic GitHub repository here. Um, in the readme, it does um, some documentation shows you how to include the, the library um, and then how to contribute back. There's also this folder here where I like to go to actually look for documentation. Um, if you click like on the button, it'll give you um, some documentation on the actual button component um, as well as um, for like mark integrations. There's also a uh, demo app in the actual repository that will be deployed sooner or later on a on a internal and external server so that uh, we can run the actual demo app for checkout JS so you can see that uh, if you look we can look in the issues so anytime um, a developer around the world runs into an issue they can act they have an outlet directly uh, to PayPal so they can submit issues on the issues log and um, you know we can actually work to uh, to fix those issues so if we look at um, just as an example issue 161 so this guy actually did a great job of putting all the information into a GitHub issue and submitting it. 
so these are kind of the issues that we could get when actually developers are giving us um, issues online. We tend to get quite a bit more information. All right. So another feature of Checkout.js is it's an NPM package, which means that we no longer are required to actually include um, Checkout.js via script tag. We can install it via NPM and require it into an application. So if you are creating your own library, you could do an NPM stall, install for the Checkout.js library and then use Webpack to just include that functionality into your um, JavaScript library. Uh, Checkout.js is adhering to Semver, which means that it will be, uh, anytime there's a major um, breaking change added, they'll be uh, bumping the version, uh, the first portion of the version, so it'll go from like check version four to version five, uh, any sort of minor breaking changes would, you know, change it from 5.1 to 5.2, uh, and so on. Uh, Checkout.js handles all the button rendering for the merchant, so the merchant doesn't actually have to include a, uh, an image tag anymore. Um, and that button rendering is also has locales as well. So it'll translate the button for the merchant. Uh, Checkout.js does the paypal.com rendering either uh, in a light box or in a pop-up. Checkout.js does the cross-domain communication, so it's, it was built on post robot and X component, so uh, it basically is just a way for the merchant site to communicate back with Hermes. So Checkout.js, the new version supports callbacks for events. Um, we have some basic events for uh, payment, unauthorized, on cancel, on click, and on air. And we'll go over those in detail um, on another slide. So Checkout.js provides a branded overlay on the merchant site. So right when you click the button, the merchant site will be um, kind of grayed out and have the actual PayPal logo, logo on it. So it looks very nice. Uh, Checkout.js has the ability to execute basic AJAX calls and it has a HTTP library built into it. So merchants actually, if they don't already have a library to do that for them, um, can just include Checkout.js and make these basic AJAX calls in order to um, communicate with their server. Uh, Checkout.js is promise-based. Uh, so we saw promises in the very first uh, exercise that we did. Um, it allows us to do a lot of things in an asynchronous fashion and you'll be definitely seeing more with promises in the future. And Chatter.js has a robust, robust unit testing uh, to prevent bugs and regression issues. Uh, most times than not, uh, unit testing really helps prevent the actual regression issues when you make one update, making sure that, that update doesn't break something else. Um, so once we actually fix an issue in Checkout.js, we write a test for it, and then that test pretty much guarantees that in the future, uh, that same condition is going to pass when we make changes to the code. So here's a quick table of the event callbacks. Uh, so events are one of the most important enhancements in Checkout.js, and it's very important that we know what they are and when they are called. So these events are basically just those functions that are mes messaged back and forth by X component in, in post robot. Uh, but they are, it's important to know when they're actually executed during the, the payment flow. So the payment callback um, is executed after the button is clicked and after the initial spinner window is rendered. Um, that is when the typical usage is to go out and make an AJAX call to get a token 
Um, and this function must return or resolve a token. Uh, the onAuthorized callback is executed after the user clicks the Pay Now or Continue button in the checkout flow. Uh, this is normally used to uh, get PayPal account details, pre-populate forms, uh, as well as you can even execute the payment. On cancel is executed when the user closes the window or the experience. And typical usage is to reset the page um, back to how it was maybe before they clicked the PayPal button. Um, the on error callback is executed if there's a failure in the, the checkout uh, process in the actual checkout JS script. So you'll see uh, that used for error recovery. Then also there's an on click callback event that can be that is executed immediately on click of the button. And it really should be only be used for click tracking. So if the merchant is click or tracking clicks on their site. Since our button is now in an iframe, the only way that they can track that is via this on-click event. All right, so checkout JS button and checkout X components. So at its core, checkout JS is only two X components called button and checkout. You'll actually see them um, on the page it, when the checkout JS script is loaded, it actually goes on to paypal.button and paypal.checkout. So button is the only thing uh, that merchants interact with and it's rendered by the merchants page. Checkout is rendered by the button components iframe when the user clicks the button. So checkout is actually used on the PayPal side and button is used on the merchant side. So we can take a look at um, the documentation for these quick. If we look at the, um, the button component in the GitHub repository, so you'll see under PayPal checkout source components button, you see there's a component. There is a template and index and a, parent's temp, a parent template. Um, so this would be anytime you want to see the source code uh, for the button component that merchants actually use. And then you can also view the checkout component, which is rendered um, from the button iframe. And it is under PayPal checkout source components checkout. And then it, you can find the button component properties on its component definition. Remember when we did the X component um, lecture, we mentioned that the component definition file defines all of the things that we can pass you know, between um, the iframe and the parent site. So if we look at the button component, uh, component definition, which is actually located, um, once again, in the GitHub repository, but it's under PayPal uh, checkout source components button and then the component.js file. So if we lo look down at line 45, remember the props object are the actual properties that are getting messaged across. So in here we can see env. Well, that directly lines up with the documentation for the button. We can see that well this one doesn't have an m but normally you would have an m here to pass the environment but then we'll see next is client so that would map to client so as we release new functionality and if you ever want to see all of the options that you can actually pass through the button component <clears throat> if you look at the component definition file uh, into the props object you're going to see the most up to date um, options that you can pass through because possibly the documentation hasn't been updated yet for some of these or maybe they're undocumented like the on remembered um, you know you won't see this in any documentation but it's actually in here as a a callback so we could go through all these um, you'll see the locale style 
So when they recently released the PayPal credit button, we saw that there was a style.label now, and that's how you get the PayPal credit button. And that really wasn't um, documented anywhere, but we could see it on the component definition. <clears throat> All right. So what does the button component do? Remember the button component is what the merchant interacts with. So the bo button component will render the button in an iframe on the merchant site. And it actually renders that button from paypal.com onto the merchant site. The iframe contains a button with an on-click event listener. And when clicked, the button iframe renders the checkout component. And then lastly, the uh, button component actually handles all the messaging between the merchant site and the Hermes checkout experience. Um, so it's technically kind of like you can think of it as a middleman in between Hermes experience and the checkout component and the merchant's website. All the information is actually flowing through the button component in that iframe that it renders. So what does the checkout component do? So the checkout component is the kind of like the Hermes. Um, it renders Hermes in a light box or a pop-up. It handles all the messaging um, between Hermes and the button iframe. And it properly closes the experience. And it also sends data and, such as like payer ID, cancel URL, return URLs. Um, payment tokens back into the button iframe into the button component. All right, so here is a diagram um, to go over kind of the, the flow between um, these two X components. So you see you have the merchant site. The merchant site calls the button component dot render. So now the button iframe is actually pulled in from like paypal.com or sandbox.paypal.com. Um, and the button is displayed to the user. And the user clicks it. And when the user clicks that button iframe, uh, checkout.render is executed, which actually um, starts the checkout component, uh, which either renders PayPal in a uh, light box or a pop-up. Next, window.xprox.payment is executed, and that calls back to the merchant and executes what we passed into the button component's payment property as a function. Remember, typically this is used to go get a payment token, and it must actually resolve that payment token or return it. So that's what we see here. So that payment token is then returned back to the button iframe. And then the checkout component in the button iframe uh, renders the checkout now URL with the token that was returned. So the user goes through the PayPal flow. They click continue or possibly pay now at the end there. And then Hermes calls window.xprops.onauthorize which then sends data, and at that point data uh, is, like I said, the payer ID, the payment token, the payment intent, um, and any sort of data that Hermes needs to send back goes back into the button iframe, into the checkout unauthorized callback. So then the button iframe actually calls the window.xprops unauthorized, which sends the information back to the merchant site with data and actions. So actions is an object that contains some functions that will make it easier for the merchant to do some additional actions such as redirect the top page or um, execute the payment, um, go get the information of a payment. There's a bunch of things that we'll go over uh, in a later section, 
but these are actually messaged back to um, the merchant site from the iframe button iframe. So at that point, uh, <clears throat> the button iframe calls checkout close. Once the unauthorized is done, which closes down the Hermes experience, um, either the pop-up or the light box. And that is it for the diagram. And that is it for the lecture on checkout JS. Our next section is going to be a deep dive into what we just saw in this diagram um, using Chrome DevTools so we can actually see uh, how this process operates.